the so-called G-fragment, hit with uh, six million megatons of equivalent energy. That's roughly equivalent to a Hiroshima-like blast every second for 13 years. What would a collision even a fraction of that size do to our Earth? A major impact from a comet would have devastating effects for the Earth. Imagine the following scenario. Scientists have spotted a three kilometer wide comet on a collision course with our planet. It's too late to stop it. The first thing you'll know is when the sky lights up and the ground shakes. Brilliant meteors streak across the sky as the giant comet's debris strikes the Earth's atmosphere. Forests would catch fire, ignited by the superheated air. When the comet hits, the blast would kick up millions of tons of fiery rock and dirt. The airborne debris would blanket the planet and block out the sun. Day turning to permanent night, bringing freezing temperatures and year-round winter. It would take more than a year for the dust to settle and for sunlight to filter through the clouds. When it finally did, the Earth would start to warm quickly. Elevated levels of gases created by the fires would turn the planet into a sweltering greenhouse. Millions of species that survived the earlier cold would be unable to take the heat. They would die. It would take thousands of years for life on Earth to recover. How great are the odds a comet will strike the Earth? Will another impact occur? You bet. It's going to happen again. The Earth is sitting out there with a bullseye on it. The chances of a major impact in our lifetimes may be slim, perhaps in the order of one in 100,000. But astronomers the world over are working fervently to understand these strangers in our midst, struggling to learn what comets are and where they come from. Mankind's ultimate survival may depend on our ability to stop one before it strikes us. In the 17th century, stargazers observed how some comets orbit the sun in regular intervals, like the planets. One astronomer even predicted the return of the comet that now bears his name, Halley. But no one knew what they were made of or where they came from. As late as 1950, astronomers could only guess at their true nature. Fred Whipple, the father of cometary astronomy, envisioned comets as flying mountains of frozen gases, ice, dust and dirt. He called them dirty snowballs. He theorized that as comets neared the sun, they shed dust and gas as their ice vaporized, forming their signature tails. It wasn't until the 1980s that astronomers were able to test Whipple's theories by approaching these speeding ice balls. What they discovered surprised them. In 1985, as part of the International Sun-Earth Explorer program, they flew a spacecraft loaded with sensors through a comet's tail. In 1986, the European Space Agency sent a craft called Giotto to study Comet Halley's nucleus. The scientists feared the debris flying from Halley would destroy Giotto. It didn't. The craft not only withstood the pummeling, it sent back amazing photos of a cratered, sponge-like surface with jets of gas shooting from within. Suddenly, scientists began to wonder exactly how rock-solid comets really are. In the year 2000, they got more clues. On its approach to the sun, a comet named Linea unexpectedly blew apart. Earth and space-based telescopes captured the explosion, allowing scientists to analyze the chemical composition of the nucleus for the first time. That information combined with data from the early flybys, confirmed what astronomers were beginning to suspect. 
Comets are not ice hard. They are surprisingly fluffy, porous, and fragile. Johns Hopkins University's Hal Weaver simulates the comet's unexpected makeup. Okay, we're gonna make one of the most primitive objects in the solar system, a cometary nucleus. These cotton balls are just barely held together. One of them just fell off. And as comets pass through the, through the inner solar system, they get heated up. And sometimes these little cotton balls just fly off and break apart. Comets consist primarily of chunks of water, dirt, ammonia, and carbon. Molasses in this experiment. They are permeated throughout with frozen gas, what we know as dry ice. As comets near the sun, the ice vaporizes, releasing gas and dust that form the characteristic tail. You see the ice subliming going directly from the solid phase to the vapor phase. This is exactly what happens when a comet's going around the sun. It doesn't look like your original concept of a comet, does it? But it's a single solid object. You can see active regions on the surface bubbling up. We get activity only on specific spots for a lot of the comets. And as they fly by through the inner solar system and heat up, sometimes chunks just drop off. And sometimes we see the comet completely disintegrate. This new knowledge about the fragility of comets may seem reassuring. How can they do so much damage? But as they race through space at more than 10 kilometers a second, even small comets can spell disaster. Donald Yeomans studies comets for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Well, they are fragile, and you could break them apart with your hands, perhaps, but they're huge. You know, they're 10 miles in diameter, and so it doesn't really matter that they're fragile. They're so big that they've got a lot of mass, and it's mass and velocity that's important when they hit. We can't stop a comet heading towards Earth if we can't see it. But that's another mystery plaguing scientists. Where do these cosmic travelers come from? Astronomers have long observed comets emerging from deep space. To know exactly where they've been, they would need to get their hands on actual comet dust, a record of a comet's birth and its travels. Three, rainbow are all the way across. Two, we have main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Stardust spacecraft. In February 1999, NASA's Stardust spacecraft began a voyage to rendezvous with a distant comet named VILD-2. Its bold mission was to collect dust from VILD-2 and return it to Earth. By raising a giant gel-filled Petri dish, roughly 30 centimeters in diameter, it collected more than a thousand samples as it sped by the comet at almost 32,000 kilometers an hour. The mission was a remarkable success. In January 2006, seven years after liftoff, Stardust's cargo capsule returned to Earth. contents have been a treasure trove for scientists. We thought comets all formed from stuff pretty far from the sun. We're finding in this comet grains that formed right next to our sun. Born near Earth, when our solar system was formed, the comet then fell into an orbit that took it far beyond, according to surprising new data from Stardust, much farther than scientists once thought. It's not just material from our own solar system at its birth stages, but also materials from, from different distant stars mixed in as well. And also materials forming far from it and just sort of like passing by. It's a real grab bag of, of things in our galaxy. The story of the comet's origin begins 4.6 billion years ago. Our solar system is in the midst of a fitful birth. In the center, a cloud of gas and dust begins to contract into an immense disk. 
The disk's powerful gravity sucks masses of matter inwards. Pressures and temperatures soar until the enormous dense ball ignites, its gases and matter imploding in nuclear fusion.